we had over 3,000 visual effect shots, and they're all incredibly difficult. Um, and it was the interlacing of stories that we had to create. At times, it had to be completely invisible, and at times, it had to define the moment. Come on, I feel like I'm the only one eating here. Try some of that. Have some eggs. I'm so confused. Mark was oh, elevated great. a little bit for the eye line. We sure did so. the entire yeah. scene with him there, and then we replaced his body with the Hulk body. The whole idea of the Smart Hulk is to have as much as Bruce Banner possible, because this is the very first time that we have a Hulk that speaks for long periods of time. You see a lot of Mark in the Hulk, and you see a lot of the Bruce Banner mind when you hear him talking, and that's why I think we were able to cross the bridge of believing that a Hulk smash that we had before becomes the Smart Hulk. I put the brains and the brawn together, and now look at me. It was a lot of fun to have shield on shield action. We had a, uh, three or four stuntmen that consistently fought Chris, and Chris Evans did a lot of the a lot of the fighting himself. At the beginning, we had them both without the cow, and it got to be a little confusing. So we ended up adding a CG cow to make sure that we could identify who was who. <laughs> When you have the list of things that you want to do, and you say, wouldn't it be awesome to have Cap fight Cap if it was from another time? So it was one of those super fan moments that we, we were able to bring to life. That is America's ass. With the battlefield. It's the same approach that we've done for every other movie. And this movie, everyone had to be represented, so that was a challenge itself. There's about 42 to 45 minutes that is purely CG. Maybe there's I don't know, three or four minutes where it's just the, the actors that are running towards each other or fighting. Avengers! Assemble. But that took a lot of thinking, a lot of weaving of storylines, a lot of different pieces that we didn't have that had to be created in order to make sure that every group or every actor or every character got their time and that we could honor how they were either going to fight, to lose their part of the fight, to win their part of the fight, or to die fighting. I think if you don't have the character connections, we don't have a movie. And I think visual effects should always be a vehicle to continue to tell the story. The most important thing is that if the scene is only about visual effects, people will check out. If the scene is about the story, with the visual effects as part of it, people will engage. We have had all these movies where slowly but surely we had female representation, so they are on the battlefield. Don't worry. She's got help. And I think it was important for them to sort of come together as a force. And in order to do that, you needed to show their strength and their strategy in battle, which is what they are. They're all warriors. way that you have to honor your heroes, you must honor your villains. Thanos is a very difficult character. At no point in time do you think that's a CG character. I mean, I think you buy into that is Josh Brolin. And that's the beauty of it. And, and Josh was so, so collaborative throughout. I am inevitable. That character itself was done by a few companies. It wasn't done just by one, but it was seamless throughout the picture, which is the magic of visual effects. So our goal is always going to be to make sure that we have audiences that engage with us and we will try and give them the best backgrounds or the best characters or the best weapons or the best powers possible. Trying to create that balance is always a little difficult, but I think at the end of the day, we did a good job.